I am honored to be interviewing Arnie Duncan, former Secretary of Education under Obama. I don't have to introduce him because his name, he is a legacy. So I'm going to get started with a few questions and I would love your insights, uh, especially now when we're dealing with COVID. My first question for you is, in light of our equity issues and our teacher and institution preparedness coming into light, what kind of message do you have for our legislators, educators, and parents, and students as well? Well, this is just an extraordinarily difficult, I hope not once in, in a generation, I hope once in a century type of crisis. And it's devastating, it's brutal. I've lost friends, I have people who are very sick now. This is not some theoretical issue, this is, this is visceral, this is real, and here in Chicago, we've been hit pretty hard. So um, what, do we, what do we do with it? Um, you can only hope that some good comes out of a, a tragedy, a crisis like this. And my hope is that what this has done is this has, has exposed the massive inequities that you and I and so many were aware of, but not frankly enough people were aware of. And whether it's inequities in access to healthcare, whether it's inequities in access to, to jobs and investment, or what we're talking about, whether it's in inequities in access to a high quality education, that devastating reality is slapping everyone in the face. So for me, the goal is not just to get through this crisis and get back to normal, whatever normal was, because normal simply was not good enough for far too many young people around the, around the country. If we can reimagine education, if we can think about a much more equitable and just and fair society and a high quality education for every child, if we have the courage to do that, then that makes me really hopeful. But that's a big if, quite frankly. I don't know if it, as a nation whether we have that kind of courage, but I desperately hope so, and I'm gonna do everything I can to try and contribute to that, that movement. So that leads to, I guess it's a great segue to my next question, which is when we had to deal with post-2008 you know, recession and our withdrawing funds from education, frankly, what kind of messages do you, or what kind of lessons can you, can we glean from that time? Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that's sort of more than 10 years ago. That feels like yesterday. And we were able through our, uh, through the Recovery Act to get a hundred billion dollars for education. You know, we had just started there in, in DC and uh, we saved a couple hundred thousand teacher jobs around the country. That felt amazing to be able to do that. But the truth is we also lost a couple hundred thousand teacher jobs. And I think, you know, had we not done it, it would have been just a catastrophe and we were able to stave off a catastrophe. But that was really real. I always had this like mental image in my head that haunted me of teachers in unemployment lines and teachers not being able to pay their rent or pay their car note and just the, not just the educational, but just the, the family devastation, the economic devastation to our country. So to to put a finger in that dike, not perfectly, not as much as we would have liked, but in a pretty significant way, um, what was huge. And then we obviously used a small portion of that money for Race to the Top to really try and drive some systemic change around the country. Um, what, honestly, what troubles me now is we received about $100 billion out of a roughly an $800 billion uh, Recovery Act package. Um, what we're seeing now in the current administration is a $2.2 trillion stimulus more you know almost three times what we had but only about 20 billion dollars going to education so i worry about the massive disinvestment i worry about the hit to you know that states are going to take and um uh, we, we can't afford to take a step backwards educationally but uh, unfortunately i'm you know i'm always just honest i just don't think education is that much of a priority for the for this administration and whether it's k-12 or higher ed um the next, you know, going forward, unless more money follows in, in, in further bills, um, it's going to be a really, really extraordinarily tough time. So I'd like to ask, are there any other areas for which we should brace? We're talking about funding for teachers, equity. Yeah, no, this, this, is, this is touching everything. You know, my biggest fear, we see the, the unemployment numbers skyrocketing. Um, I'm talking to superintendents every week, you know, working through a bunch of different issues around distance, distance learning and social emotional well-being. But this food distribution idea is a is a massive one, and schools are lots of things, and they're obviously you know educational institutions first and foremost. But schools have become social safety nets, and schools are distributing tens of millions of meals every single day, and we're trying to desperately keep that up and running. And if that breaks down, then we got really 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 tough tough issues 
Um, so we have to do all these things. We have to continue to feed families who were already poor. We have, you know, unfortunately, millions of families that were, that were you know, okay, you know, maybe living paycheck to paycheck, but they were making it, and now those paychecks have disappeared, and they may or may not be coming back. And so we have to continue to feed it in this crisis. And then again, student social and emotional well-being, the amount of stress of having your life turned upside down, the amount of stress of, of losing loved ones and, and the fear. Um, for me, you always have to have a foundation of social emotional support. Are our kids fed? Are they safe? Mm -hmm. You know, are we dealing with their, their stress and trauma? And then if we're doing those things, then let's talk about the highest of academic standards of, you know, AP calculus and physics or whatever. We have to build that foundation. So there are school systems now, obviously everything's moving online where they are daily touching base with students, social workers, counselors, psychologists, whatever it might be, teachers, checking in with students and just not starting right with algebra, but starting with, are you okay? Yeah. And how are you feeling? And that's always been important. That's always how, you know, that's sort of how I was raised. Um, but now it's more important than ever. As the former Secretary of Education, I would love to ask you, what, what do you think is so great about American education and what could pull us through this? Well, what I'm seeing now, again, is both heartbreaking, but also honestly, unbelievably inspiring. What's heartbreaking to me is the, the devastation that this is hitting us, you know, financially, you know, educationally, you know, healthcare wise. Um, what we're seeing again is how uneven, how inequitable our society is. Whenever you have a crisis, the most marginalized, the most disadvantaged communities, the most vulnerable get hit the hardest. And that's all of those three, all those things wrapped into one with this tsunami. Um, the lack of, you know, again, I'm just honest, my, my personal opinion, the lack of federal leadership, or maybe even I would call it benevolent leadership is devastating. But given that reality, what I'm seeing at the state and local level of folks stepping up, working hard, solving problems, nobody went to school, no one got a class in these things, yeah. figuring out together, getting devices, getting hotspots out, putting Wi-Fi on buses, distributing not you know, one meal, but sets of meals for children and for families and for the community. To see the heart and the creativity. Um, I tweeted out something the other day. I just saw on Twitter a teacher who obviously can't you know, get in contact with, with uh, the students, but a couple had birthdays. So she went outside their house, wrote happy birthday on the sidewalk and texted them. You know, And that's the kind of thing, that's a teacher, just an amazing part. And uh, so I am constantly inspired by the hard work I'm seeing at the ground level. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're, it's a tough time, but tough times can either break us or pull us closer together. I think what we're all seeing is our, our common humanity. And um, that's actually a really, really good thing. Yeah, the dedication of the teachers in our communities, for sure, it's a lot of heart. Um, and my final question for you is, personally or professionally, I'd love to end on a, another note of optimism. What have you learned from this time? Something new that you might like to share? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm always optimistic. These are hard times. I spend lots of time with kids and young people and, you know, across the country and now much more sort of on the south and west sides of Chicago. And what I see, despite poverty, despite violence, I just see amazing, amazing, smart, talented, hardworking, committed, resilient young people who are working every single day to be successful. And I see not always, but often amazing, amazing adults working with them to help them achieve those dreams. And so I am optimistic and it's not a blind optimism i think i'm very i'm very realistic i'm very pragmatic i am optimistic because i see the heart and the compassion and the empathy of adults and i see young people every single day overcoming unbelievable obstacles to get a great education and move forward um, so this is tough this is devastating we've never seen anything like this i hope to god we never see anything like this again um, but we'll get through it and we'll get through it together and if we can reimagine education, if we can reimagine a society, again, that's more fair and more just and more equitable, um, that would actually be extraordinary. I love that. So we can hopefully take this as an opportunity to reimagine and create opportunity for those who are less advantaged and give everybody a, a, the best education possible. We, we have to, and shame on us. If we don't take this opportunity to do that, shame on us. Again, I don't want to go back to normal. I want to create, create a new norm. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right, thanks for all your leadership. Thanks for having me. Thank you.